Hey friends, my name is Z and you're watching Z Makes It Easy. And welcome to the first lesson for Add to UCSU at Max. And today we have indices right here. And for the first slide, we have some rules for indices. But if you haven't already, just drop a like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. But let's get into some rules. We have quite a lot here for indices. And you notice there's some like A right here or B. So basically A and B or any other like um, letters, they are constant. Constant. So it could be any numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4 or anything. But it's always constant throughout the whole equation or expression. And X or Y, they are variable. So it could vary, vary, you know. So the first one is a to the power of zero equals one. So it could be any constant, like it could be equal, like equals to nine to the power of zero equals one, one thousand to the power of zero equals one. So anything to the power of, of zero equals one. So now next we have a to the power of m times a to the power of n equals a to the power of m plus n. So for example, it could be, let's say, 9 to the power of 3 times 9 to the power of 2 equals 9 to the power of 5. So one important thing to note is that the base number, which is in this case, it's 9. Sorry, 9, 9, they're all the same. It's just a power that's different. So in this case, it's 3 for the first one, 2 for the second one. So m times n is m plus n. So it's 3 plus 2, you get 5. And to double check this, you can put this into your calculator, this left hand side right here, to see if, if it matches up to the right hand side, and it would be. And for the third one, there's a to the power of n times b to the power of n equals ab bracket to the power of n. So what differ, uh, the difference is that from the second one to the third one, the base is different. So this is a and b, and the one uh, before is A and A, they're both the same. So an example for the third one is that, let's say, 9 to the power of 3 times, let's say, 7 to the power of 3 equals 9 times 7 to the power of 3, or 63 to the power of 3. And you can check it in your calculator to see if it's correct. And let me just wrap this out. And for the fourth one, a to the power of minus p equals 1 over a to the power of p. So the, the main thing is you have, you have to get rid of this negative sign so that it's easier to see, like the form here. So an example is that 9 to the power of minus 2 equals, to get rid of the, uh, the negative power, you have to do 1 over 9 over 2. Notice how I got rid of this negative power right here. I'll just highlight this so that you can see it more clearly. Negative power and positive power. And I'll wrap this up. And then we have next, we have a, a over b bracket to the power of minus p equals b over a to the power of p. So they're both quite similar, but this thing is a fraction, and th uh, th th this, the second one is a fraction right here. So to get rid of the power of like this a and b, you have to do, as before, you have to do 1 over a over b, right? And 1 over a over b, you can simplify it as b over a. So to illustrate this, we have, like, let's say, a to the power minus this, this. They're both equal, right? So you get a over b to the minus p. Do 1 over a to the b minus p, like this. Like 1 over this. And notice that you can flip it over to express it as a more easier form to express. So that one would be equal b over a to the power of p, basically to get rid of the negative power. So an example could be, let's say, 3 over 2 to the power of negative 4. It's also equal to 2 over 3 to the power of 4. And let's wrap this out. Then next we have a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n equals a to the power of m minus n. So it's basically like a, a divide rule where you minus it. It's similar to the times rule where if it's times, it's plus, and if it's divide, it's minus. 
So for example, an example could be 9 to the power of 3 divided by 9 to the power of 2 and it will equal to 9 to the power of 1. Notice how the power they are like minus, it's like 3 minus 2 equals 1, which is right here. And we'll rub it out now. And moving on to the right hand side, we have some two repeated ones from here. So just ignore these two. And then we move on to the third one. We have a to the power of n divided by b to the power of n. Notice how the power are the same. It's n and n, they're both n. So the power n, you can group it together to put it outside the bracket. And then you have to bracket the a over b. So it could be 9 to the power of 3 divided by 8 to the power of 3 equals 9 over 8 to the power of 3, or cube. So we'll rub it out now. Then moving on, we have a to the power of 1 over p equals p, um, like p root a. It's basically to convert a, like a square root or cube root to an indices form. So like, let's say we have cube a so equal to a to the power of 1 over 3. Or we can like just cube square root a equal to a to the power of 1 over 2. It's quite straightforward. And then we'll move on. It's the same one but I added a new constant, p. So a to the power of p over q equals this right here. It's quite complicated but we'll break it down. Just ignore the p first, we'll set it as a1 over q p. And you notice from the previous rule, you can apply this rule down here. So it's q, like q root, a in the middle, then to the power of p, which is what we have right here. So basically the top power right here, it's uh, the whole thing power. Like if you notice, if you notice we have p here, it's a whole power. And then if we have down here q, it's the root power, or like cube root, square root, or any other root. Then we'll rub this out, and then we'll move on to the last one, which is a to the power of m to the power of n. It's slightly different to the second one right here. It's times in the second one, but in this case, it's like to, uh, to the power of. And in indices, there's, not, there's no such thing as to the power of for the power, so you have to times the power together. So a to the power of n, uh, bracket to the power of n, will equal to a to the power of mn. So mn is basically times the power together. So we have, let's say, 9 to the power of 3, bracket 2, it will equal to 9 to the power of 6. We can see here, 3 and 2, you times it get together to get 6. So we'll move on to some examples for indices. We have the first question, we we'll split it in 3. We can rewrite this to get 4 to the power of 3 over 4. Divide by 4 to the power of 9 over 4. Which gets us, which gets us 4 to the power of minus 6 over 4. And we can actually simplify this, um, this fraction right here, or this power, to get us 4 to the power of negative 3 over 2. So to get rid of the negative, remember from just now, we can do it 1 over 4 to the power of 3 over 2. So let's do that. 1 over 4 to the power of 3 over 2. And we can get rid of this 3 over 2 by applying it to the 4. So let's square root this because it's easier. It become 1 over 2 to the power of 3 because we got rid of the, the 1 over 2 right here to get 3 left. Then we can see that 1 over 2 over 3, this 2 over 3 right here is equal to 8 basically. You times 2 by th itself 3 times. So the final answer would be, let's change the color, 1 over 8 here. So moving on to the second question, we have quite a simple one as well. 9 to the power of 1 over 3 times 9 to the power of 1 over 6. Remember when we have a times rule in indices, you add them up together. So if you're using a calculator, you add those up, 
1 over 3 plus 1 over 6 to get us 1 over 2. Or well, can we write it better? Root, two, root 9, which is basically plus or minus 3. Actually, we write in a, in a different color so that it's easier to see the answer. In a green, become plus or minus 3. It's important to write the minus as well because a minus and a minus times together to get, get a positive. Unless if the question specifies that the answer is only positive or the answer is only negative, then you don't have to include both positive and negative. Then the third question is kind of a trick question. You can see to the power 0, which is just 1. 1. It's a, it's a trick question. Then we'll look into this challenging question. It's quite a, a big, uh, big expression, so we'll just break it down slowly by slowly. Starting with the top here, let's split it up. This yes. we can rewrite it as two to the power four x and sixteen. That's right here. Plus twenty two to the four x. Right here. All over. Let's just color code this. Right here. All over 2 to the power of x minus 3 and change the base here 2 to 3x plus 6 and let's color code this as well bottom one to get this so just kind of make sense of this and then we'll do some simplification we can take the 2 to the power of 4x out from the top take it out and it will leave us with 16 plus 20 inside the bracket if you don't understand, we're basically taking this 2 to the power of 4x and 2 to the power of 4x and bring it down over here. And then 16 and 20, it leaves us in the bracket. And to simplify the denominator, we have 2 to the power of 4x and minus 3 plus 6 is 3, so plus 3. And then you can notice that we can cancel the 2 to the power of 4x together. Let's highlight like this. This. And this we can cancel it out together so it leaves us with 16 plus 20 over 2 to the power of 3. We can just simplify the 2 out but I'll just expand the whole bracket so that it's easier to see. It will equal to 36 over 8 and if you type it out in your calculator you have to write it out in the most simplest form because that's how add maths work. So this will equal to 9 over 2. Actually no, let's write it in another color. And this will equals 9 over 2. And then we have in this instance change the base of a rule, you could say, or some questions. So for the first one, we're split in half. For the first one, we're split into 2, like 9 to the power of 2x. And then we have this right here. And for the 9 to the power of 2x, we can put it in the simplest base, which is 3. So it becomes 3 to the power of 2. 2x because it's the same and let's highlight this times 3 3 5 x over 5 sorry x plus 5 and let's highlight this and we can simplify this it will equal to 3 to the power of 4x times 3 to the power of 15 x plus 5 Equal to 3 to the power of 4x times 3 to the power of 15x plus 75. And to summarize it off, we can simplify it to the fullest, like 4x times 15x is basically plus. So it will be 3 to the power of 19x plus 75. And that's the final answer. So moving on to the right, we have this a change of base question. It looks different because it has an equal sign, but this is how you should approach it. And we can note that 4 and 16, they have a common, like, highest common base, which is 4. So you could just simplify this 16 to base 4, and base 4, you can just leave it there. But I'll just simplify it to the fullest, which is base 2, because it's much easier to visualize. So for the right, sorry, for the left, we have 2 to the power of 2 
uh, x plus 6 and on the right we have 2 4 x plus 5 then we get u2 2 to the power 2x plus 12 equals 2 to the power 4x plus 20 so in this scenario where you have both like base of the same like 2 and 2 it means that the power has to be equal to each other so this power has to be equal to each other so you can extract the power out of this um, expression or equation to get 2x plus 12 equals 4x plus 20 and let's highlight this and then to solve the equation you can just uh, like rearrange it to get 2x equals minus 8 and hence let's change the color here x equals minus 4 and that's the final answer and then we have some exponential equation for indices and as I said just now if a to the power of x equals a to the power of y we have the same base then x equals y which we looked into it just now already so we have this simultaneous equation so we're gonna, we're gonna split this into one one equation and this into another equation into another form because we can't do simultaneous equation like this so for let's name this, let's name this one for, so for number one we can see that you can add the power up so it is 5 to the power of x plus 4y and as for the one right here remember that we have a rule that anything to the power of 0 is 1 so it's a trick question 5 to the power of 0 so this equals to x plus 4y equals 0 and that will be the first equation and for the second equation we can just add the power up as well 3 to the power of 5x plus 2y sorry equals 3 to the power of negative 2 then you can equal to 5x plus 2y equals negative 2 because of this x y this the same due to the same base and this is equation number two so it's basically a simultaneous, equa simultaneous equation we have x plus 4y equals 0 which is number one and for number two we have to times the two sorry the 2y by 2 because you have to match up the each of the variable in this case I'm going to match up y so times the whole equation 2 by 2 which gets us 10x plus 4y equals minus 4 and I'm going to minus this all up which gets us negative 9x equals 4 and therefore x equals minus 4 over 9 and you can put it in the calculator right now like what I'm doing 4 over 9 divide by 4 to find what y is which therefore means y equals 1 over 9 it's basically the sum here in this equation and that's how you get the answer and that's pretty much it for the first video for RGCSE at math where today we look into indices like different rules and exponential function and different things and I hope you all found it useful and helpful and if you did please leave a like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos and if you have any comments or constructive criticisms just drop them off in the comment section and I'll reply to them and if you need any resources, you can find it in the description where I have my website or you can type it out in the browser at www.yemisteryeasy.com and you can find your way to the app math section where I have all of my lesson slides and YouTube videos and resources. And also check out my Instagram in the description for more daily content. And I hope you'll find it useful and helpful and I'll see you all in the next video which will look into cert. Until then, stay safe and happy learning.